If you've ever received information in this stacked configuration, where each row represents a different piece of information, if we look closely at this, the first row is the rank, the second row is the company, the third row is the category, and the fourth row is the sale in millions for a specific year. But your boss wants to see a chart of total sales by category. How do we rearrange the information into a tabular structure like this so we can then make something like a chart like this? Well, let's look at two different methods for solving this problem. One is an older method that I used for years, but then the second is a newer method that I've learned that I think is a little bit better. But each one of these methods utilizes techniques that you can use to solve other problems. So even if you're never given a stacked list of information like this, the techniques we're going to use to solve the problem might prove beneficial in other situations. So let's take a look at solution number one. This data set starts in A6 and goes all the way down to A254. The first thing we need to do is highlight the data. Now, one of the things about bringing data into Power Query is Power Query has a tendency to want to turn everything into proper tables. Let me show you what I mean. Let's click up in the name box and select everything from A6 through A254. Now we'll go up to Data and say From Table Range. Bring this into Power Query. And I'm actually just going to cancel this process. But look what happened to our data. It was turned into a proper table. Here's how we can keep that from happening. I'm going to hit Undo. Let's take this highlighted range and give it a name like sales. When you give a range a name, this prevents Power Query from doing that table upgrade. Now something I've become a fan of doing here recently is instead of going up to data and choosing from table range, because this requires switching ribbons to get there, if you right click on the highlighted range and choose get data from table range, this will perform the same operation. It's a little bit faster. So let's zoom in on this data a little bit. I'm holding down Control Shift and my plus sign to zoom in and Control Shift minus sign to zoom out. So the first thing we're going to do is rename this column to data. And the only reason I'm doing that is because it's just nicer. You can leave it as column one. So much of Power Query solutions revolve around discovering some sort of pattern in the data. So you can capitalize on that pattern. In the case of this data set, notice that the rank number from the first restaurant is one, two, three, four, five rows from the rank of the next restaurant. The name of the restaurant is also five rows from the next name, the category is five rows from the next category, and the sales is five rows from the next sales. So five is our magic number. What we need to do is create a looping list of numbers from one to five, one to five, one to five. This is going to allow us to create a collection of each value associated with one of those numbers. Now to do that, we actually have to build two lists of numbers. The first list is just a sequential list of numbers, like one to 50. And to build this list, we'll go up to Add Column, Index Column. If you click the arrow next to Index Column, you can elect to start this list from either 0, 1, or some custom value to begin with, and a custom interval to increment. I'm going to start with 0. You'll be surprised how often creating a simple list of numbers is needed when solving more complex problems. Now from these numbers, I'm going to create a second list of repeating values. This is where we're going to use that pattern number. So with the Index Column selected, I'm going to go back up to Add Column, Standard, Modulo. And we're going to perform modulo division on this. Modulo division is where we divide each of those index numbers by a value, but only keep the remainder. We discard the whole number portion of the answer. Five is our pattern number, so we'll type that into the value field. Hit OK. And notice I have a repeating list of values from zero to four. Now, if you thought this list was going to go from one to five, it's because we started the list at zero. But it doesn't matter what the numbers are, as long as they repeat consistently. Now it's time to turn this into a pivot table. We'll use those modulo numbers as headers. So we're going to get five new columns labeled zero through four. Everybody who's on a row zero, which are the ranks, will go into a column. Everybody who's on a row one, which are the store names, will go into a different column. So with modulo selected, we'll go up to transform, pivot column, the values field, we want to select the column that has the data. And then under advanced options, pivot tables normally like to aggregate something, but in this case, we don't want to aggregate. So we're gonna choose don't aggregate. Hit okay. Let's zoom out a little bit. We see everything that's under column zero are ranks, column one are store names, column two are categories, column three are sales. We do have an extra column here and that was to account for the blank row between each set of information. We don't need this blanks column and we don't need the index column any longer. So I'll select both of those and delete them. We'll zoom in. This technique gives us this sort of natural stair step appearance in our data, but somehow we have to get McDonald's up here to row one, burger up to row one, and the sale amount up to row one. So to do this, I'm going to select column one, two, and three. Do not select the first column. You'll see why in just a moment. 
but with all of the other columns selected, I'm going to do a right click, fill up. Any row that has a rank number is a complete record. Every other row is a mixture of information and likely some of that information isn't even correct. This is why we didn't fill up the first column because we're going to use this to filter out the null rows, getting rid of all of those garbage records. So now we have our ranks, our store names, our categories, and our sales. The only things left to do now are give these better headings, and then some proper data types. Let's rename this to solution one and send it back to Excel. Now we've got our proper table. That is the technique I used for years when solving this type of problem, but let's look at a different way of doing it, something I've recently learned and I think I like it a little bit better. So as before, we'll start by highlighting the data. I've named it sales. I'll do a right click, get data from table range, bring this into Power Query. I'll zoom in a bit. We'll rename the first column to data. And remember, I'm only doing that because I think it looks better than column one. We'll go up to add column and we'll add an index column starting at zero. Now from here, I'm going to add a second column, but it's not going to be a looping list of numbers from zero to four. That's where we perform modulo division, where we divided each number by five, that was our pattern number, and only kept the remainder. Well, this time, let's go up to add column, standard, and perform integer division. Now, integer division is going to divide each value by a number, which is our pattern number five. When I hit OK, now I get a different kind of looping list. In this case, every record for the first transaction is flagged as zero. Every record for the second transaction is flagged as one. Third transaction is labeled two. Now I'll go back to the index column, and to create that looping list of zero to four, I'm not going to create another column. Instead, I'm going to go up to transform, and then go up to standard, and we'll transform this index column into that looping list using modulo division. Our pattern number is five, hit OK. So index now has the zero through four looping list as before, and then this column is basically identifying each record. With the index column selected, we'll do what we did before, go up to pivot column. We wanna make sure we choose data as the data column. That's the data to be rearranged. And under advanced, we don't want to perform any aggregations. Hit okay, let me zoom out a bit. The advantage to this technique is you discard all of the need for doing the fill up operation. Everything is automatically rearranged. I don't need the integer division column any longer and I don't need the last column, which is just the blank rows. So we'll delete those two columns. Now all we have to do is rename our columns and then set the data types. Let's rename this query to solution two and then send it back to Excel. You can see that the output from these two lists are identical. So whichever technique you pick, you'll get the same result. Now we're in a position to answer the boss's question and that is total sales by category. So we could go up and do something like insert a pivot chart. I'll just put that pivot chart right here. Let's move this. And then we could check category and sales. Now, if this were me, I would do a little tweaking on this chart. I'm really interested in things listed in alphabetical order. I'm more interested in performance order. So I'm going to right click and sort this in descending order. I'll get rid of my heading, get rid of my legend. My axis doesn't need to go all the way up to 120,000. So I'm gonna double click on the axis and then set the maximum here to 100,000. Any other tweaks you'd like to apply to this chart are strictly up to you. Be sure to download the solution file so you have a list of all the transformation steps that I covered in both of these techniques. You might not have to solve this specific problem, but the skills used to solve these problems can be applied in a variety of other situations. As always, thanks for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.